2002 through 2014 Volvo XC90 with the 2.5 liter turbo engine radiator replacement. I'm Brian Essick from How To Automotive and I'm going to walk you through the steps of replacing that. Okay, to get started, we're going to start by removing this little air snorkel here. So you're going to remove the bolt here and here. And once you get those removed, you're going to just grab the uh, snorkel and pull outwards and, and set aside. Next, we're going to remove this intercooler pipe. So we're going to remove the screw here, here, and then we're going to loosen up the hose clamp here where it goes into the intercooler and pop the hose off. And then we're just going to lift it up and set it aside. Get to the hose clamp, I used a long extension and a wobbly 7 millimeter socket to loosen that clamp. So once you get the pipe unbolted, it, you can go ahead and just lift it up and set it out of your way. But what I'm going to do is just loosen up one more clamp right here and go ahead and pull the pipe off and set it aside. You're also going to want to remove the engine oil dipstick and set it aside, that way it doesn't accidentally get broken. Next, we're going to start removing the wiring harness that's mounted to the, the cooling fans here. So they're going to have these little zip ties. So you're going to cut the zip ties and we'll put new ones on after we're, we're done. So cut the zip ties and then start pulling the wiring harness forward towards the engine. We're also going to start unplugging things. So we're going to unplug the fan connector here. So you just squeeze the clamps and pull. Also on the passenger side here, there's going to be a hose that's mounted onto the fan shroud. So we need to pop the little zip ties if they're zip tied on or out of their little catches like this and then just push it towards the uh, firewall. And then also on the right, Driver side, we're going to start working our way around. So anything plugged in or connected to it, we're going to pop it off also. That's... Once you get the electrical connector on the driver side uh, unplugged, you're also going to pop it out of its little, it's mounted onto the fan trial. So you're going to pull it off like this. And that way you can push the wiring harness forward. So once you get the whole wiring harness free, you'll just push it towards the engine and kind of just hook it on something so it doesn't fall back in your way. Next, we're going to remove the upper radiator hose here. So you're just going to follow the hose in onto the up radiator here and then loosen up the clamp. And then you're going to pull the hose off the radiator. I'm going to actually change out the radiator hose in this job. So you can just follow the hose back, loosen it up, and pull the hose off. After you remove the upper hose, I would recommend that you change out the thermostat. There's two bolts holding it on. Uh, on this car, the customer elected not to do it, so I'm not going to film it. But but the only thing you do is remove the bolt there and there. And if you can't get to this bolt with wobblies, and, or, uh, then you would have to pull the belt off the power steering pump. And you'd have to unbolt the power steering pump and kind of push it over to the side. And then that will give you access to the bolt. So now that we got the upper radiator hose removed, we need to lift the vehicle up. The radiator comes out of the bottom of the vehicle. So if you're doing this at home, you're going to need to use floor jacks and jack stands and jack the front up as high as you possibly can. If you don't get it up high enough, when the radiator comes out, you'll get stuck and you won't be able to get it out. So now that we got the vehicle up in the air, we need to remove this front skid plate shield here. And it's going to be held on with some bolts. So there's going to be three on the left side and then there's going to be three on the right side that we're going to remove. Once you get the skid plate unbolted, you'll just grab it and push it towards the front of the car. And then on the right and left side, you're going to have to flare the bumper back just enough to clear the uh, the plastic. And you'll kind of work it left and right and the it'll come the skid plate will come out. So once you get the little skid plate off, it's going to look like this. Now what I'm going to do is start removing the uh, lower radiator hose. So on the driver's side right here is going to be the lower radiator hose. Loosen the clamp, pull it off. Just above that, there's going to be an oil cooler or transmission cooler. Squeeze the tab and pull that line off right here. While the coolant is draining, I'm going to go ahead and remove the this little cooler here. So if you follow to the right here on the driver's side, there's going to be a bolt here. And then we're going to follow over to the passenger side. The cooler and there's going to be a bolt here. We're not going to take the hoses off. We're just going to unbolt it and swing it down out of our way. The oil cooler is going to start coming down too. So what we're going to do is on the side here is there's another screw. We're going to remove the screw here. We're going to leave the lines connected and we're just going to lower it down and kind of swing it out of our side out of our way. So now that both coolers, the engine oil and the power steering cooler are unbolted, you can just pull them, push them back out of your way. And then what we're going to do is go back around towards the driver's side and get this engine uh, transmission cooler line off by squeezing the little green tabs and pulling the hose off. And then just above that is going to be a pipe, intercooler pipe, that's mounted to the uh, turbo intercooler here. 
So you'll unloosen the clamp and pop the hose off. After you get the hose off, then I'm gonna lower the vehicle back down and there's gonna be another cooler, transmission cooler line that we're gonna pop off. And then after that, we're gonna start unbolting the, uh, the radiator and the uh, intercooler here and start working it out of the car and I'll walk you through that. Now that I got the vehicle lowered back down, on the driver's side of the car, there's gonna be another transmission cooler line going into the radiator. Just like the one below, we'll just squeeze the green tabs and then pull the line off. And Just below the uh, transmission cooler line and above the intercooler pipe, there's gonna be a little sensor here. We need to unplug that, it's connected to the uh, intercooler. Once you got the transmission cooler line disconnected and the intercooler pressure sensor disconnected, just above that is going to be a one screw here so you have to kind of look behind the radiator like this and we're going to take that screw out and then once we get that out on the opposite side on the passenger side just below the radiator uh, neck there's going to be another screw here so we're going to take this bolt out here and that's going to unbolt the ac condenser from the radiator and intercooler now on the top of the cowling here we're going to remove the screw here and then on the driver's side or passenger side here, we're gonna remove this screw here. Before we start unbolting the radiator and dropping it out, what I'm gonna do is take a bungee cord and hook it to the AC condenser here and then hook it on. So I'll hook it on a, one of the brackets down here on the AC condenser and then pull it up over and hook it onto the cowling here. And the reason why is when we start unbolting the radiator, we want the AC condenser to stay in the car and we don't want it to fall down or kink or anything. So we want it to kind of hold and stay in the, in the general area where it's at. Then I took a second bungee cord and kind of pulled the two co uh, coolers out towards the front of the vehicle like this. That way the coolers are pulled out of our way so when we start lowering the uh, radiator down, we have plenty of clearance. So I got the vehicle back in the air and we're going to start lowering the uh, radiator down. But first, we need to finish unbolting the condenser. So right here, we're going to come around the back and, and take out the bolt here. And then also on the opposite side, we need to remove this bolt, but it also comes from the back. So you'll reach around right here and take the bolt out. Now, then the AC condenser will be floating in there. So you kind of want to just pull it towards the front of the vehicle to give yourself a little clearance and the bungee cord to hold it in. Then after that straight up vertical on the radiator is going to be a bolt. You're going to remove it there on the left side and then on the passenger side straight up vertical will be another bolt. Then we'll remove that bolt and then the radiator will start coming down. At this point you may want to have a helper help kind of hold things out of your way and keep a lookout for anything snagging as you start lowering it. So I'm starting to lower the, the radiator out and right here on the passenger side there turned out to be another wire kind of zip tied to it right here so we need to cut that zip tie. And once we get that zip tie cut, then we can start lowering the radiator. So as you pull this radiator down and out, it's gonna come out with the intercooler, radiator, and fan shrouds all as one assembly, just like this. So one of the hardest parts about getting it out is right here on the sides of the radiator, this little ear, it would get caught. And it would get caught right here on the AC condenser on the driver's side right here. So I kinda had to pull the uh, radiator condenser at an angle and push it towards the passenger side and then dip it down and then and then once I cleared the one line and I pushed it back over to the other side and then and then it cleared the uh, the lines on the opposite side to lower it straight down and out of the car also as I started lowering the radiator down I realized that there was a vent line on the top of the radiator so we needed to uh, so I had somebody cut the hose clamp off so you're definitely going to want to have a helper nearby to help so I'm going to be installing a TYC Volvo replacement radiator in the description of the video will be links for the radiator, the coolant, and all the tools that I use in this video. That way if you need to pick up any of this stuff, you can find it there in the description. So now I'm going to unbolt the uh, radiator fan and just held on in the corners with some 10 millimeter bolts. So I'm going to unbolt it from the old radiator and transfer it over to the new radiator. So it's only going to have the two bolts at the top, and then it's just going to be on these little slots here. So we're going to just push the radiator up once it's unbolted. Then you're going to just swing it over to the new radiator, slide it in to the slots, and put the two bolts in the corners. Now that we got the fan shroud bolted up to the radiator, we're going to take our old radiator, lift it up, and underneath is going to be the intercooler. So now we're going to take the intercooler here and put it underneath the new replacement radiator. Okay, before we put the radiator back in the vehicle, we need to take out the old uh, zip ties that we cut off here. And you need to install new ones so they go back through these little... These little uh, little ports here 
So you'll slide the new zip ties through like this and you'll just leave it open. That way when we put the wiring harness back on, we can zip tie it back, in, back into place. So pull out all the old zip ties, put in new zip ties into the little catches like this. Next, I'm gonna stand the radiator and intercooler up on its end like this. And I'm gonna put a zip tie on the left and right side on the upper portion of the uh, intercooler, zip tie it to the radiator. So you line up the bolt holes where it would go through and zip tie it into place. That way, that way when we install it back in the car, it's all one piece and we don't fight it. So now I'm gonna get a helper to help me lift the uh, fan, radiator, and intercooler as one assembly back up into the vehicle. As I lift it back up into the vehicle, I'm gonna have my helper start the vent line here. So they're going to put the vent line on for me on the top of the radiator right here and put the hose clamp on and tighten it up for me. Their job is also to watch out for anything that's going to snag on and hold it out of the way as we lift it up inside. On the driver's side of the radiator, there's going to be this little bracket here. We need to get that to clear over the AC condenser line. That's going to be the hardest part as we come in. So you may have to shift it left and right to, to get it to go up. And once you clear it, you'll push it all the way up and in. So like I said, as I lift it up, you'll have your helper install the vent line on top of the radiator and tighten the hose clamp. After the vent line is installed, then you can lift the radiator up into position with your helper. So I, I worked on one side while he worked on the other and we helped guide it in. I, as you can see, I got it angled a little bit to clear that AC bracket on the right on the driver's side. And once it's cleared over the AC line, then you kind of then you can kind of push it all the way the rest of the way up in place and then you'll start the two bolts on the left and right side once you get it fully up into the upright position. Once I lifted it back in position I just started the bolt. I left it loose for right now. I started the left and right bolts a few threads. That way I have every, a little bit of play and I'll start all the condensers and the uh, coolers all together all the bolts and then once I'm done I'll go back over and tighten everything up. So now that I got the two side bolts on there, they're threaded in a few times, I'm going to lower the vehicle down and I'm going to bolt the top of the radiator and the intercooler back down. So that you take the bolts that have the little guide pins and put them through the top of the cowling here and line up the radiator and, and you can go ahead and run those down and tighten those up. So now that the top pins are in, I'm going to go ahead and work on the AC condenser here. So what I'm going to do is reach around from underneath the bumper here and, and with one hand kind of lift and float the... Uh, the AC condenser to line up the uh, the holes and now what I'm going to do is cut the uh, zip ties off that we installed to hold it all together while we assembled it so I'll cut that off so I'll reach over the top of the uh, core support and start the bolt from the uh, inside so once you get it all lined up you're just going to reach over the top and you're going to start the two bolts the process will be the same on the passenger side of the radiator so you'll cut the zip tie off and start the condenser bolt from the inside. Now that the top two bolts are just started, not tight, but just started, now I'm gonna uh, install the two bottom bolts on the condenser here. So I'll come in from the back side and, and put the, uh, the two bolts through. And once I get all four of the bolts in and started, then you can go ahead and tighten that. At this point, you can go ahead and tighten the two bolts on the left and right side of the radiator, the two vertical bolts, make sure they're tight. And then you can tighten up all, all four of the condenser bolts, make sure they're all tight. After that, we're going to take the uh, transmission cooler lines and push them back into the radiator until the little tabs catch and click. Make sure you give the lines a pull to make sure they don't pop back out. Now you can take the two coolers and swing those back up into position. So the, the oil cooler will go on first and then the power steering cooler one will go on second over the top of it. And you'll start the, the bolts on the left and right side. Once those are bolted back up, I kind of just go back over all the bolts and make sure that they're all tight. So now we're ready to install the lower radiator hose. In my case, I'm actually going to lower the vehicle back down and take this old hose out and replace it. If you're going to reuse it, go ahead and bolt it up right now. It would also be easier and quicker if you had done this when the radiator is out of the vehicle. Okay, now that the vehicle is back down, underneath the air snorkel here that goes to the air cleaner is going to be the hose. And uh, you can either remove that or what I'm going to do is just work around it. I'm just going to use my Milwaukee ratchet here with a little 7 millimeter wobble socket. And uh, you're just going to come around here and loosen up the hose clamp. So you get the wobble socket on there, loosen the clamp up. Then you can just reach your hands underneath and pull the hose off. And then you kind of just 
just pull the hose out so you'll kind of flex it and bend it, you know, and, and work it out like this. And then uh, once you get the hose out of the vehicle, then you'll just feed the new hose back into position. So here's the part number for the lower radiator hose. Like I said, I'll link up all these in the description of the video. That way if you need to pick the hoses up, they'll be in there too. So the portion of the hose that has the little S curve goes downwards towards the lower neck. So I'm just going to slide it through the little, uh, the way it came out right here. So I'll just slide it through and it, it you just kind of work it through and kind of you'll like you... Just the same way you took it out, you'll bend it and flex it to get it in the shape you need to uh, get it in there. Once you get it all the way through and lined up with the uh, the bottom port, I'll just leave that for now. And then I'll go back up towards the top of the uh, radiator hose and install, the, uh, install this portion of it first and tighten up the clamp. So I'll go ahead and just push it on. And as you can see, I'm looking through the, in between the wiring harness here and you can see what you're doing. So I'll just push it on. Then I'm going to just use my little Milwaukee M12 uh, ratchet here and tighten up the hose clamp. And the cool thing about this uh, ratchet is it has a variable trigger so you can ease up the torque without over torquing it. I will link up the ratchet in the description also. Since we're up here we might as well go ahead and reinstall all the electrical connectors, intercooler pipe. Then we're also going to take the uh, transmission cooler line here on the top go ahead and line it up, push it in until the tabs lock. Make sure you give that line a pull to make sure it doesn't pop back off. Then you can go ahead and install the intercooler pipe here and tighten up the clamp. Okay, now that you got the intercooler pipe on, now you can go ahead and take the electrical uh, connector intercooler sensor here and go ahead and route it back into position and plug it in. As you plug it in, you'll probably hear a little click. I also like to give it a little pull to make sure it doesn't pop back off. After that, we can go ahead and take the wiring harness and flip it back into position and go ahead and start the fan, the little electric connector on the fan shroud here and, and then take the zip ties and zip tie the wiring harness back onto the fan shroud. So I kind of just start from the driver's side and work my way over to the passenger side, reconnecting everything and plugging everything back in. So I just plug the electrical fan back in, give it a little tug, make sure it doesn't pop back off. Resecure the hose that ran down the the uh, passenger side of the fan shroud. So I like to work from one side of the radiator over to the other. So I'll make sure everything's plugged in, and then as I'll follow it up, and I'll make sure it's all zip tied on, and keep following it down all the way to the onto the passenger side. And once everything is hooked back up, then you can go ahead and take the air snorkel pipe here and install that. So you can go ahead and uh, install it over over the back of the turbo there and then run it down onto the intercooler on the radiator and put the hose clamp on and tighten all the brackets up. So I made sure the, the hose clamp was tight in the back and then work my way all the way back to the intercooler and make sure everything is tightened up. After that we can take the air snorkel here, go ahead and reinstall it. It plugs into the bottom of the air box there so you'll plug it in and then you'll put the two, uh, two bolts on the left and right side in and secure it. Once that's bolted up, I just use my ratchet here to, to go around the back side and make sure the condenser bolts are tight and secure. Now I'm going to focus on this little rubber grommet that goes around the radiator and the condenser. So it has to pop into the, the radiator right here on the top and right here it hooks onto the top. So you'll just make sure it's all hooked into position. So working on the passenger side here, I make sure that the little grommet's in place on both left and right side. And, and then you especially want to make sure it's in place because on the driver's side here, it affects the hood latch operation. So if it's not in, right, in the right position, it could affect how the hood latch operates. So now we're going to go ahead and install the lower radiator hose, finish installing that and tighten up the clamp. Then I'm just going to double check that all my brackets are all there and tighten, go over everything, make sure nothing's rubbing or anything like that. And then once that's secure, I'm satisfied, I'll reinstall the lower skid plate. I'll lift that up into place and kind of have to flare the uh, bumpers left and right, you know, out of the way and slide it back into position and bolt the uh, six bolts up. Then I'm going to lower the vehicle back down, go ahead and reinstall the upper radiator hose. I'll link this up in the description of the video also. Now you're ready to install Volvo 5050 mix coolant and fill up the reservoir. Once it's full, then you're going to run the vehicle until the upper radiator hose gets hot. That's when the thermostat will open up. So the thermostat will open up 
and most likely the coolant level will drop then you'll just top off the coolant level to the full mark you don't want to overfill it it's got an expansion tank if you overfill it it will pop the tank so then after it's, uh, the thermostat's uh, operating and run I also like to just run it for an additional time until the cooling fans come on and run make sure everything is uh, working properly so after running it for about 10-15 minutes and the cooling fans have run, the thermostat has opened up and the coolant level is topped off to the proper level, that will complete the job of replacing the radiator on a 2002 through 2014 Volvo XC90 with a 2.5 liter turbo. I'm Brian Essay from How To Automotive and I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos, encourage you to subscribe, I invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. And also don't forget that I'll link up all the parts and tools that I use in the description.